YouTube. What the crap's going on? Era of Carthage here. Was it a day for news of Total War or not? This trailer, by the way, and I'm going to say this, it is probably the coolest game trailer, one of the coolest game trailers I've ever seen. Now, the reason I say one of is because there, there's been some pretty cool Halo trailers. Now, of course, this is a personal opinion, but this is impressive. This is by far, like, the coolest Total War trailer I've ever seen. Awesome music. Awesome use of the uh, the engine here to put together an incredible trailer. Um, this, I, I mean, Bretonia was nowhere near my list, like, the top of my list of favorite factions. But this has totally got me hyped for Bretonia, And they have done some really cool stuff with the units. And there's going to be new campaign mechanics. Couple that with the fact that custom maps are making an appearance in campaign. I, I kid you not, like this, I've said it before on, a, on another CA video where I commented, I think that the custom maps and campaign is going to make this the biggest thing in Total War probably ever. Like the fact that you can customize your campaign content like this. And I, I cannot praise CA enough for this type of thing. Please more. Please more. <laughs> Give us these tools. Not because your game stinks, but it's just, it's so cool to have that ability to customize the campaign with the mods and stuff to the way that you want it. And it makes the game replayable over and over and over again in the first player, which is a huge value. You know, if you can get that going, then I think you're more likely to have people sticking around for multiplayer and other stuff as well. Um, and, and multiplayer, obviously, is a, a bit of a different thing. But yeah, was this trailer awesome or what? Yep, the Bretonia hype train is moving at full speed down the tracks, people. That's right. So February 28th, I believe, it becomes available. I was going to go over and take a look at the Steam page. Now, let's talk through some of this. I'm going to zoom up so you all can get a better view of the uh, Steam page. So... This is a free LC. It's funny because I actually saw a comment on the video, and I'm hoping it was sarcastic, where someone's like, yeah, only $29.95, and I'm like, uh, really, it's it's free. <laughs> so, Bretonia is a free LC. Everybody's going to get this. And then, uh, the other thing is, too, is we won the Isabella von Karstein thing in the Make Love, uh, make War Not Love thing. So, yes, that's also exciting. So, it gives you a description of the uh, Bretonians, um, and it's pretty cool. It gives you a little bit of background, uh, what's coming in the game. Um, and there's a, pretty, a few pretty big pieces of this that I want to, to cover here. So there's a couple, well, this big new mechanic that's going to play in for Bretonia. One of them is chivalry. And if you read it here, it says your level of chivalry. And you can imagine this, this is a unique thing for them that gives them a unique flavor in campaign. A Bretonia campaign, or hang on, your level of chivalry is tracked by via a meter at the top of the campaign. As you perform certain actions, such as winning heroic victories uh, and completing quests, your chivalry rises, bringing with it benefits, such as higher control, keeping your peasant population content, bonus unit experience, and reduction in corruption. Other actions, such as warring with other Bretonian factions and sacking settlements, can reduce your chivalry. This is cool. It makes you have to play Bretonia the way they're meant to be played. Stuff like this is neat. It makes each faction unique, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so big on Total War Warhammer, even though I like historical settings better as just kind of a matter of fact. But this game, in my opinion, is the best Total War game because of things like this. If they could incorporate things like this into the, um, the, the historical titles, I think it'd be a huge win. Now, I'm not talking about magic or all the other nonsense like that, but if each faction could be made to feel as unique as it is here, and this is exciting, this is extremely exciting. Um, they announced a few cool things here. Um, the Green Knight is like a legendary hero that will show up if you have a high enough chivalry with certain lords, and they can call upon the Green Knight. He shows up only temporarily, and you get to use him, I'm, I don't know, for a, a few turns or a limited number of times. I don't know exactly what it is, but he shows up on this uh, horse here. It's uh, his shadow steed, I guess. Uh, you get the Blessing of the Lady, um, so this is pretty cool, too. Uh, basically, let's see, it gives you... Any lord and his attendant who achieve a heroic victory in battle will receive Blessing of the Lady and will thenceforth receive a ward save for future battles. How cool is that? Like I said, this this little stuff like this, I think it's awesome. Peasant economy. So their, their whole economy is built around the peasants. Um, so let's see. It says, with too many peasants committed to the armed forces, there will be fewer available for agriculture and labor. So basically you have to kind of... You know, determine how you're going to help allot the peasants in your lands to help either drive economy or drive military or to balance that out properly so that's going to be cool the legendary lords that you get and this is also extremely awesome 
each of these legendary lords starts in a different province and they lead different factions. Again, CA, please, this is great. More of this, please. Lu and Leon Kerr leads Bretonia. The Fey Enchantress is going to lead Carcass, uh, Carcassonne, or yeah, however that one is. And then Alberic is going to lead Bordelot. Um, this is exciting. I really like this. Um, they're going to have new, like, non legendary lords, so you're going to have a lord or a prophetess meaning that you're going to have like kind of a damsel type leader. The paladins are still there, damsels are there, but here's one of the other cool things. The fey enchantress, who's one of the new legendary lords, she's going to be lore of life and has a special special unicorn that she gets to ride on. And that's pretty cool. Alberic is kind of more like um, more similar to Leonker, I believe. And then when you come down here in these heroes, the damsels now can come with either lore of beast, heaven, or life, so it gives you options. That's really a cool deal too. And then here's the full Bretonian unit roster. Let's talk about this. Peasant mob, great. These guys are going to make great videos for Gorbul. He's going to always be ripping them apart. <laughs> Foot squires, I don't know exactly what these guys are yet. Uh, spearmen at arms, spearmen at arms with shields, these were already there. Er, spearmen at arms with shields were already in the game, so spearmen at arms is a new unit. Men at arms, which is going to be a sword unit. Then you have men at arms with shields. Then men at arms with pole arms, which are already in the game. You have a a Grail Relique, this is a special like morale kind of boosting unit. Battle Pilgrims, which is um, kind of like a damage dealer type of unit. Um, almost like, I'm guessing they're going to be like kind of a mix of lightly armored infantry and flagellants. That's going to be my guess with these guys. I don't know exactly. Now this is, this is going to be cool too. So they nerfed Peasant Bowmen, which at first kind of worried me because Peasant Bowmen weren't that great. I mean, they were pretty good. But it's because they added two different varieties of them. They have one with fire arrows and pox arrows. And I haven't seen any explanation of these yet. As we see it, we'll talk through it. But obviously, I'm guessing pox is like a poison. And then fire, I don't know what it's going to do. But uh, even if it just causes flaming damage, think about the kind of help that would be against vampires. Who have a lot of units with the regeneration trait and they're weak to fire damage. That would be a huge deal. Even if that fire arrow just means it causes flaming damage. Um, mounted yeomen are still there. Uh, and then we have Knights Errant, which are going to be like a cheap cavalry. Like, uh, And then you're going to have Knights of the Realm, which have been given bonus versus large, by the way. Uh, questing Knights, um, these guys are going to be like armor-piercing anti-infantry type of units. They're going to be one of the main units that Bretonia has to rely on to beat heavily armored infantry or other heavily armored units. They carry a double-handed sword. Grail Knights have now been given bonus versus large too, and a 20% physical resistance. These guys are going to be beast, and I'm assuming that Grail Guardians, which I haven't seen yet, but Grail Guardians have got to be an even better version of Grail Knights. That's going to be sick. Um, so, range still have mounted yeoman archers, Pegasus Knights are still there, but now they've added this Royal Pegasus Knights, I'm assuming an upgraded version of them, or maybe they have an anti-large or something else, I don't know what the Royal Pegasus Knights are. And then you have Royal Hippogriff Knights. Is this going to be like a flying unit of demigriffs? Because if so, that's going to be absurd, um, absurdly cool. And then you have a, a field trebuchet, and they've added a new one here, blessed field trebuchet. So I'm assuming probably some kind of increased accuracy or damage or debuff or something that it does. Folks, this is neat. All of this is coming in free. All of it. And, I mean, this is, this is big. I love this type of support from Creative Assembly. Um, I think they've done a great job. I haven't even gotten to play it yet, and I think it's going to be great. <laughs> I did see that on um, Twitter, uh, CA Dogbert had said that he was going to be sending out some codes to YouTubers um, tomorrow or actually today if you're watching this. I don't know if it's going to be under an embargo, if I'm able to get a code or when I'll be able to show anything. As soon as I can show you some of this, obviously I will. I'll bring it to you um, as soon as I have it and as soon as I'm allowed to do so because I am totally pumped for this and can't wait to dive in. We will be doing a Bretonia campaign. You may want to think about who you want to see me do the campaign as. I mean, I'm thinking it'd be pretty cool to be Leon Kerr. That's kind of where I'm leaning right now. I am going to do a Chaos campaign because people have been begging for that. And then I and I may want to run a campaign with Isabella um, or Vlad or one of the two. So anyway, man, I'm pumped. What do you all think? Are you excited for this? This trailer, though, people, really the trailer, it was awesome. I'm going to leave it back here. We'll leave it back where we started. Please leave your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'm so stoked. So stoked. And I will see you all in the Bretonian Kingdoms here very, very soon. Air of Carthage, signing out for now. Uh, this will be a perfect backdrop to leave it off.